So welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to use Dex Screener. This is essentially a tool I use every single day to chart my favorite altcoins, some of which are very small by market cap. And this actually collects all the data for any on-chain trading. So very useful to do. I'm going to run through the top five features on here and show you how to utilize them for yourself. So we're going to start off, we're on the website here, dexscreener.com. And as you can see, this is showing you a nice chart here of Matic to USDC via Uniswap. So the good thing about this is the fact it actually pulls in any data from any DEX. So Uniswap, SushiSwap, maybe it's PancakeSwap, or even smaller ones on many random chains. You can see from the left-hand side, all the different chains down here. You've got the main ones, BSC, ETH, Polygon, Arbitrum, etc. But then there's some lesser known ones down here, Velas, the KuCoin chain, and even more obscure ones further down this list. This just gives you a bit of an overview of the various features on here. There's some gainers and losers. There's some new pairs, some trends, some of the hot coins right about now. I'm gonna run through the top five features though. And the first one is just basically the chart area you can see in the main in front of you. So this first feature is just utilizing trading view chart but for any altcoin. So we'll actually just switch this up and find you a random one that you wouldn't find on the likes of trading view main hence deck screener comes in and aggregates all the data onto their platform from any other decentralized exchange this one is we go swap over from phantom and on the right hand side you can see a load of information the coin price in dollars the price of it in phantom its native chain the liquidity for this token on this various exchange which is its own we go swap the fully diluted valuation of the token and the market cap currently of the circular in supply but you may wish to double check this information as sometimes it is incorrect You've also got the transactions today, 513 have taken place over 24 hours. You can change this to these various different metrics, maybe in the last hour, but over the last day, 500 transactions in, total volume $73,000, 220 buys, but 293 sells, hence it's down a little bit. And you can see the makers and the takers, and you can see... And you can see how many buyers and sellers there have been in totality. Then further down, we have some more information, the pair info, the WeGo contract address here. And if you scroll down, you've also got trade on WeGo Swap, search for it on Twitter, and the website is just down here, along with some social media channels just below my face. So this overall is the main interface. We also have the DEX trades down here as well. I just wanna quickly show you how I actually chart these things. I would always start off on a line chart as it gives you less noise. Noise in terms of when you have candle charts, you get all these wicks to the upside, to the downside sometimes, depending on what the coin is. Some of them have horrendous wicks and it just means more noise on the chart. I would then pull it out to a weekly, get this a little bit tidy and as you can see this doesn't have a long history for this coin stick it on log and auto and then you can see the nice breakdowns here so this was a previous area of resistance on a couple of occasions you can see we've kind of pinged off it recently as well but as there is not too much data i'll have to go down to the daily here as well i'll chart that bit in so that previous resistance i'll then do a daily again control and then i'm just going to scroll out with my mouse there was a little stop off on the way down a bit of a breakdown in price action there maybe there's another one just further above horizontal ray around that area and so i've got a few price targets and a few areas this could come and visit in the future so essentially what I do from this is just map out the supports and the resistances on the chart and then try to make a trading plan as to how I would trade between these various levels. Now the second feature on here I really like is the watch lists over here. In order to utilize this, you will need to log into a wallet. You don't have to have any funds on here whatsoever. Just sign in with a MetaMask account and then you can utilize this as your own and really personalize things. So on the watch list, you can see all my different watch lists here. And we're going to focus on Arbitrum. So these are the Arbitrum coins that I have currently on my watch list. We will click into Magic here. And here we have the price history of the Magic token. So you might be asking, how do you create these watch lists? And why would I create a watch list? Well, you create a watch list to categorize your favorite coins within a specific niche of the market. So for example, I've created an Arbitrum watch list here because I want to monitor the Arbitrum coins. When money flows into Arbitrum, I can see it on the charts by flicking through these and it means I'm doing some prep work ready for the Arbitrum season, which it currently kind of is an Arbitrum season. So if you've done the legwork in the background, you've got your watch list ready, your favorite altcoins in this category, you're gonna be good to go in terms of trading them when the time is right. So let's add a coin to the Arbitrum list here. I know Gains Network recently joined up on Arbitrum and you can see here, this is the Arbitrum logo. So this is the 
Gains Network trading on an Arbitrum based DEX. We're going to click into this. As you can see, this is the Arbitrum Uniswap pair. And on the right hand side, we have Add to Watch List, and then we'll click Arbitrum. So that will now populate on my Arbitrum watch list. If I just pull this up, you can see GMX, PSI, Sliz, Arc, Magic, Dice, and now Gains at the bottom. And then this tab over here, I can pull it up and then put it wherever I want it in the list. Typically, I'd like to have the highest market caps first and the lower market caps further down the list. So here we have the full trading history of Gains on the Arbitrum L2. And as you can see, I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven coins in here. These are ones that I've done some fundamental analysis on, the ones I like. And then what I can do from here is obviously just go through these different charts, see which ones look like they're quite hot, see which ones are maybe topping out, see which ones are in areas of a support or a resistance in terms of how I've charted them out previously, and just take things from there. Crypto runs in these narratives and these cycles, so you have to have these lists ready to go in order to capitalize on these rotation plays. The third thing I like on here is the set price alerts feature. This is where you can simply, as it says, set price alerts. So for example, on this token, which is DICE, maybe I'll set a price alert for $4.75 and I'll create the alert on there. This will then give me a bit of a ping once this is actually hit. And this would be, if I pull this down, you can see the alerts are set up here. These are all my price alerts currently active. And what I've done there with that is because 475 is the previous all time high of DICE, if it breaks above that area now, I know it's going into price discovery yet again, and it may be a good opportunity for me to go long on that token. You would obviously be able to do this for both supports and resistances, maybe come down to here, $2.27 or $2.50. If it has a nasty retrace all the way down here, I might be interested in buying some down here if I'm still bullish on this token over a longer term. And you can also see there is a managed price alert. So you could obviously come in and now delete that and then reset a new one or just create another alert alert so maybe at $2.75 to give me an alert if price does break down to that point. Now feature number four is the wallet diving feature. So this is here. This has all the DEX transactions. When you're trading on chain, of course, the blockchain is creating a timestamp of everything that's going on. So what I like to do is wallet dive here and find out what some of the bigger accounts are doing. So for example, this token here is PSI. This is Trident, a game based on Arbitrum. So in the minimum trade volume, I've put in five grand here. So people with slightly bigger accounts, I can then pull up all the transaction history from most recent scrolling down will be older transactions. So let's have a little look. For example, this guy here has bought 34 Ks worth of this token. So in the maker column, you can see the actual person who's created this transaction. So for example, someone who's traded with 34 K, I might be very much interested in pressing this button here to see his wallet and then going in ERC20 token transactions and seeing what he's been doing. He's been buying some Trident and then he sold all of his bags in three transactions over the last hour. This might be useful information to me, or I could just dive into his wallet here and see what other coins he's got. He hasn't got anything in this one, but I have found in previous occasions, some of the wallets, especially in the Arbitrum ecosystem, because it's a new ecosystem, that the whales do get ahead of schedule in terms of picking things up before they really pop off. So this is where you'd want to be diving through the chain, looking at these wallets and seeing what the big movers and shakers in a more nascent market sector are doing. So that's four features covered. And so the last feature here, feature number five is multi-charts. So multi-charts allows you to put together up to 16 charts all in one place. I wouldn't suggest doing that many in one go. It's gonna be very hard to see things. But here we can see just simply three charts on screen. These are all LSDs, liquid staking, derivatives, Rocket Pool, Lido, and Frax. So they're in the similar market category. And this just gives me a bit of an opportunity if I may be in one of these bags. Say I own a load of Rocket Pool now, and I'm looking across these other participants in this area. Look, Rocket Pool's just taken off, Lido's just taken off, but Frax looks like it's just been consolidating here. Shouldn't they all move in tandem? Well, maybe what I would do is trim this position here and allocate a little bit more into Frax. As I would expect, Frax to have a bit of a catch up play here to its rivals, Lido and Rocket Pool. So this is rather straightforward, but what you can do here is obviously look at trending narratives in the markets, whether it's the LSDs, whether it's your Arbitrum tokens, and then just have a holistic view of a load of them in just one simple place. And from there, drawing your own conclusions as to how you want to trade those.
So I hope you found this introduction to Deck Screener helpful. Those are just five features I use on a day-to-day -day basis to get myself a bit of an edge in this market. If you enjoyed this one, make sure you subscribe to the channel, drop me a comment down below, and also share the video with others if it really did help you out. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.